New York City. New York City, Table of Contents. Learn about the rise of New York City as it became a world port, financial center, and theatrical center. See how this led to the development of the Broadway musical from the earliest days up to showboat in 1927. Explore the five boroughs of the city, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island. Dr. Sidney Socloff. Dr. Sidney22 at gmail.com. 2023. Narration by Dr. Sidney Socloff. Zoe Phonemes. And Nathan Coltov. For a complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to tinyurl.com slash ytnavigator. New York City. New York City has had the largest population of any city in the United States since the first census in 1790. Almost every subsequent census passed an oath a demographic milestone as the city grew in increments of 100,000 at decadal intervals through the 1800s. New York City is at the center of a vast metropolitan area. With a population of 18.9 million, 2023, it encompasses parts of southeastern New York State, northeastern New Jersey, and southwestern Connecticut. New York City is the largest city in the United States and one of the largest in the world. On New York Bay at the mouth of the Hudson River. The part of New York is now mainly on the New Jersey side of the Hudson River and is one of the world's leading ports. With a population of 8.6 million, New York City is still more than twice the size of the next largest U.S. city, Los Angeles, with 4 million people. Throughout its history, New York City's population growth has imposed extraordinary pressures on its infrastructure. New York City is made up of five boroughs separated by various waterways. Brooklyn and Queens occupy the western portion of Long Island, while Staten Island and Manhattan are entirely on their own islands. To the north, the Bronx remains attached to the New York State mainland. Each of the five boroughs is coextensive with a county. Manhattan, New York County, the heart of the city, on an island, the Bronx, Bronx County, on the mainland, northeast of Manhattan and separated from it by the Harlem River, Queens, Queens County, on Long Island, east of Manhattan across the East River, Brooklyn, Kings County, also on Long Island and the East River adjoining Queens and on New York Bay, and Staten Island, Richmond County, on Staten Island, southwest of Manhattan and separated from it by the upper New York Bay. Twelve million immigrants arrived at Ellis Island in New York Harbor between 1892 and 1954, and just over one million arrived in 1907 alone. New York became the largest city in the world by 1925 and would remain so until it was surpassed by Tokyo in 1960. When the five boroughs were combined in 1898, Greater New York instantly became the world's second largest city, exceeded only by London with a population of 6.3 million. In 1775, it was estimated that only about 10% of the total American population of 2.5 million lived in cities. This is to be compared to about 80 to 85 percent today. Of those, four of the five biggest cities were in the New York and New England colonies. Philadelphia was the largest by far, which made it a logical choice as the nation's first capital. Hail of the top 10 U.S. cities by population in 1776. We see that at the time of the American Revolution of 1776, 
Philadelphia was the leader in population, closely followed by New York City, and then Boston, Charleston, and Newport, Rhode Island. Even so, the population of New York City is a mere 22,000. Here are the top 10 U.S. cities by population in thousands in 1790. Even in these early colonial days, New York City was the leader in population, closely followed by Philadelphia, Boston, Charleston, and Baltimore. Even so, the population of New York City is a mere 33,000. Note that Northern Liberties is a neighborhood in Philadelphia, north of Center City along the Delaware River. When combined with the Philadelphia population, this would make the population of that area exceed New York City by 6,000, and therefore, it would be the largest in the country. Here are the top 10 U.S. cities by population 20 years later in the early federal period in 1810. We see that New York City has taken a clear lead in population, distantly followed by Philadelphia, and even more distantly Baltimore, then Boston, and Charleston. The population of Philadelphia has increased from about 29,000 in 1790 to 41,000 in 1810. But New York City has almost doubled, from 33,000 to 61,000. It is important to note that in the colonial and early days of the Republic, most of the population lived in rural areas and not in the cities. It was not until the mid-1800s that the urban population began to predominate. Here are the top 10 U.S. cities by population another 20 years later in the federal period in 1830. We see that New York City has taken a clear lead in population, distantly followed by Philadelphia and Baltimore, then Boston, New Orleans, and Charleston. The population of Philadelphia has increased by about twofold from 29,000 in 1790 to 64,000 in 1830, but New York City has increased from 33,000 to 127,000 an increase by a factor of almost four. This is due in part to the opening of the Erie Canal in 1825. New Orleans is now showing up for the first time at 28,000. Here are the top 10 U.S. cities by population another 20 years later, in 1850. We see that New York City has taken a commanding lead in population very distantly followed by Baltimore, New Orleans, Philadelphia, and Boston, all with about 100,000 population. Now Cincinnati shows up in sixth place. New York City has increased from 127,000 in 1830 to 318,000 in just these 20 years to 1850, an increase of 2.5. Again, this is partly due to the Erie Canal and the new railroads to the west. Note also the appearance of the city of Brooklyn, not yet a borough of New York City, at 38,000. Here are the top 10 U.S. cities by population another 20 years later, in 1870. We see that New York City still has a significant lead in population, but Philadelphia has surged to a solid second place. Brooklyn, still not yet a borough of New York City, has surged to third place at 269,000. This is followed by Baltimore, Boston, New Orleans, and Cincinnati. Now, in addition to Cincinnati, we see more Midwestern cities, with St. Louis in eighth place and Chicago in ninth place. Now it's an that 30 years later, in 1900. We see that New York City has increased from 816,000 in 1870 to 3.37 million in 1900. And Brooklyn no longer shows up. This tremendous increase in the population of New York City is mainly due to the consolidation of the five boroughs in 1889. 
Chicago has now surged to second place. And Philadelphia has dropped to third. And North Midwestern City. Cleveland. Is appearing in seventh place. And now the West Coast city of San Francisco is showing up at ninth place. Now it's another 30 years later. In 1930. We see that New York City is now up to 5.7 million and is twice the size of second place Chicago with 2.7 million. Philadelphia remains in third place with 1.8 million. The Midwestern cities of Detroit, Cleveland and St. Louis now make strong showings at 4th, 5th and 6th places, respectively. Pittsburgh appears in 9th place. And now the California city of Los Angeles is in 10th place. Now it's another 30 years later. In 1960. We see that New York City is now up to 7.9 million and is more than twice the size of second place Chicago. Still in second place with 3.6 million. Philadelphia remains in third place with 2.1 million. Los Angeles is increasing rapidly in fourth place at 2 million. And will soon surpass Philadelphia. Now it's another 30 years later. In 1990. We see that New York City has dropped a bit to 7.1 million, but still is more than twice the size of second place Chicago, which is still in second place with 3 million. Chicago is essentially tied with Los Angeles. Philadelphia has dropped to fourth place with 1.7 million. After Detroit at 1.2 million, we now see the first Sun Belt cities of Dallas in seventh place. San Diego in 8th place, and Phoenix in 9th place. Now it's 27 years later, in 2017. We see that New York City has increased to 8.6 million and is more than twice the size of now 2nd place Los Angeles. Chicago is now in 3rd place with 2.7 million. And Philadelphia is down in 6th place at only 1.6 million. We now see the first appearance of the Sun Belt City of Houston up in fourth place at 2.3 million. Followed by San Antonio at 1.5 million. San Diego at 1.4 million. Dallas at 1.3 million. And San Jose at 1 million. This is the situation in 2023. New York City has increased just a little to 8.8 .8 million and is twice the size of second place Los Angeles at 4.2 million. Chicago is now in third place with 2.7 million. And Philadelphia remains down in sixth place at only 1.6 million. The Sun Belt City of Houston is still up in fourth place at 2.5 million. Followed by the other Sun Belt cities of Phoenix at 1.6 million. San Antonio also at 1.6 million. San Diego at 1.5 million. Dallas at 1.4 million. And San Jose at 1.1 million. These are the projected populations for 2035. New York City is projected to increase a little to 9.4 million and remain more than twice the size of second place Los Angeles at 4.4 million. Chicago remains in third place with 3 million. And Philadelphia remains down in sixth place at only 1.8 million. The Sun Belt City of Houston is still up in fourth place at 3 million. Followed by the other Sun Belt cities of Phoenix at 1.9 million. San Antonio at 1.7 million. San Diego at 1.7 million. Dallas at 1.6 million. And San Jose at 1.35 million. We will next have a short video clip on the top 10 largest U.S. cities by population, 1790 to 2017.
Although New York City became the world's largest city between 1926 and 1954, it lost that title to Tokyo in 1954. And more recently, in 2019, it is way down to 12th on the list. We will next have a short video clip on the top 15 most populated cities in the world, 1700 to 100 2019.
throughout all these years. We see New York City's dominance as the preeminent city of the U.S. Not only in population but also in finance, fashion, publishing, culture, and possibly second only to Los Angeles in entertainment. The Boroughs of New York City The total population of New York City is 8.3 million, 2023, in five boroughs. Manhattan, 1.63 million, or 19%. Brooklyn, 2.56 million, 31%. Queens, 2.25 million, 27%. The Bronx, 1.42 million, or 17%. And Staten Island, 0.48 million, 6%. The island of Manhattan is essentially a protrusion of granite, rising a few hundred feet from sea level. The southern tip and center of the island are virtually solid granite, while areas in Greenwich Village and Chelsea are composed of softer soil. As a result of this geologic arrangement, Manhattan's tallest buildings are located in these two large rocky areas. Manhattan is flanked on its west side by the Hudson River and east side by the Harlem River on the north and the East River on the south. Manhattan's street layout consists primarily of avenues and streets. The space between avenues is typically much larger than between streets by roughly three times. Brooklyn was primarily a marshland before it was settled in the late 1600s. The Dutch were the first settlers from the Old World to colonize this borough in the 17th century. Although they shared the land with British settlers, the Dutch culture was the dominant one well into the 19th century. When first asked to join New York City as a borough in 1833, Brooklyn refused. Brooklyn in a close vote, did not decide to become a part of New York City until 1898. Today, Brooklyn is a borough of many neighborhoods, each with its own strong ethnic flavor. It's very rare to find a New Yorker whose family has lived in America for more than one generation and didn't have an ancestor who lived in Brooklyn at some point. The borough of Queens was named after the wife of Charles II of England, Queen Catherine of Braganza, in 1683. The area became a borough of New York City in 1898, and rapid economic and physical growth followed the merger. At the beginning of the 17th century, Queens was mainly populated by small farms and was predominantly rural. During the 18th century, the area started to experience manufacturing growth along the East River shores. After the merger with New York City, the growth that had already begun increased at an ever-increasing rate. The area has been very popular for new immigrants in the past half of this century. Queens is primarily split up into different ethnic neighborhoods that feel very much like the home countries of those living there. There are very few interracial neighborhoods in Queens and the new immigrants living had tend to congregate in their own areas. New York's two major airports are located in Queens, along with a lot of the industry in New York City. Queens is connected physically to Long Island. The Bronx is the home of New York's two most significant landmarks, the Bronx Zoo and Yankee Stadium. The area was named after the Dutch settler Jonas Brunk, who had claimed the area as his farm in 1636 in 1639 Jonas Bronsk, after whom the borough of the Bronx was named, purchased land in that borough from the Indians in 1642. After many hostilities, a treaty with the Indians was signed in this house. The Bronx is the only borough of New York physically connected to the mainland of the United States. The Bronx was largely undeveloped and mainly consisted of cottages, farmlands, and wild marshes until a large swell of Irish and Italian immigrants inhabited the area. Immigrants still come to the Bronx, 
but today, they are Russian and Hispanic. The 16th century Florentine explorer Giovanni da Verrazzano is commonly considered the father of Staten Island, because he sailed into New York Harbor in 1524 and landed there in 1687. The Duke of York offered the island as a prize in a sailing competition, which the team from Manhattan won. Since that time, Manhattan has claimed the island is its own. Until 1713, when the first public ferry was started to the island, there was no way to get back and forth unless you had a boat. Finally, in 1964, the Verrazano Narrows Bridge made it relatively easy to travel back and forth. Staten Island is a place steeped in the annals of history. And prominent men have lived on the island. Cornelius Vanderbilt grew up on the island. And Henry David Thoreau and Ralph Waldo Emerson spent much time there. They praised the beauty of the landscape. Calling Staten Island a little piece of the country in the city. This is the population of the largest metropolitan areas in the United States as of 2022. This is a graph of the New York City population history from 1840 to 2022. Note the dip in pollution near 2020. This is a graph of the population in New York, Newark, Jersey City, NYNJPA, MSA, from 2000 to 2022. Note the substantial decrease starting in 2020 and 2000. The population was 18.35 million. It peaked in 2020 at 20.25 million and was down to 19.6 million in 2020. This is the New York metropolitan area population from 2010 to 2022. This shows the percentage of population change in the top 10 and bottom 10 metropolitan areas. This shows the population change in the top 15 metropolitan areas. Note that both the New York City and Chicago areas experienced significant population losses. New York City has had very rapid growth, but in recent years has lost population. The peak year was 2020, with 8.8 .8 million, but in 2023, it is estimated at 7.9 million and it is projected to be down to as little as 6.4 million in 2029. The Geography of the Hudson Valley The story of the rise to prominence of New York City has much to do with geography and geology and its strategic position between the Atlantic Ocean facing Europe on the one hand and as a conduit to the vast hinterland of America on the other. So, our story begins with the route to the west afforded by the Hudson River and Valley. The Hudson originates in several small post-glacial lakes in the Adirondack Mountains near Mount Marcy, 5,344 feet or 1,629 meters, the highest point in New York. Lake Tier of the Clouds is regarded as the source of its main headstream, the Opalescent River. The Hudson is joined at Troy north of Albany, by the Mohawk River, its major tributary, just south of which the Federal Dam separates the Upper Hudson River Valley from the Lower Hudson River Valley, or simply the Hudson River Valley. South of Troy, the Hudson is tidal and widens and flows south into the Atlantic Ocean between Manhattan Island and the New Jersey Palisades, forming New York Harbor at New York Bay, an arm of the ocean. The Hudson was initially named the North River by the Dutch, who named the Delaware River the South River. This name persists in radio communication among commercial shipping traffic, especially below Tappan Zee in place names such as the North River Sewage Treatment Plant. The English originated the Hudson name. Even though Henry Hudson had found the river while exploring for the Dutch, Distances along the Hudson are measured upstream from the battery at the low E tip of Manhattan at mile zero. The lower Hudson is a tidal estuary, 
with tidal influence extending as far as the Federal Dam at Troy at mile 134, where the mean tidal range is 4.7 feet, 1.4 meters. At the rising tide of the ocean, the river flows almost 170 miles, 274 kilometers, upstream. When the tide falls, the waters reverse course and flow back into New York Harbor. Strong tides make parts of New York Harbor difficult and dangerous to navigate. During the winter, ice flows drift south or north, depending upon the tides. The Mohican name of the river, Mohikonnetuk, means the river that flows both ways. In a famous experiment, a marked log was dropped into the Hudson at Albany. It took 36 days to reach New York City. The Hudson follows a winding course to Hudson Falls for its first 108 miles, 174 kilometers. From there, it flows, without significant gradient, almost directly south for 200 miles, 320 kilometers, to the battery at the head of Upper New York Bay, at New York City. The lower course of the Hudson, about 150 miles, 240 kilometers, long, occupies a drowned valley that is below sea level, extending seaward from its mouth for about 200 miles as a deep submarine canyon. So, the Hudson River doesn't really end at New York City. It extends for an other 200 miles into the Atlantic. In geological terms, the Hudson is sometimes called a drowned river. The rising sea levels after the retreat of the Wisconsin glaciation, the most recent ice age, have resulted in a marine incursion that drowned the coastal plain and brought salt water well above the mouth of the river. The deeply eroded old riverbed beyond the current shoreline, the Hudson Canyon, is a rich fishing area. The former riverbed is delineated beneath the waters of the Atlantic Ocean, extending to the edge of the continental shelf. The Hudson Canyon is a submarine canyon that begins from the shallow outlet of New York Harbor, at the mouth of the Hudson River. It extends out over 400 nautical miles, 450 miles or 750 kilometers, seaward across the continental shelf finally connecting to the deep ocean basin at a depth of 3 to 4 kilometers below sea level. The Hudson is often mistaken for one of the largest rivers in the United States. But it is an estuary throughout most of its length below Troy. The mean freshwater discharge at the river's mouth in New York is approximately 21,400 cubic feet, 606 cubic meters per second to be compared to the Mississippi at 593,000 cubic feet, 606 cubic meters, per second and the Columbia at 265,000 cubic feet, 606 cubic meters, per second. The Hudson and its tributaries, notably the Mohawk River, drain a large area. Parts of the Hudson River form coves, such as the Weehawken Cove in Hoboken and Weehawken. Facts about the Hudson River Watershed The Hudson River flows from Lake Taya of the Clouds in the Adirondacks through New York Harbor to the mouth of the estuary in New Jersey. The Hudson River is over 325 miles long, and it is a tidal estuary from Troy to New York Harbor. Approximately 153 miles long. The Hudson River Estuary is a drowned river valley that was also partially glacially cut. The Mohican originally called the river the Mohican Natuk, which means great waters in constant motion or, more loosely, river that flows two ways. The Hudson River is as deep as 200 feet in some places and can be as wide as 3.5 miles. More than 206 species of fish live in the river. 
The Hudson River watershed drains approximately 13,400 square miles and encompasses 11 major sub-watersheds. More than 65 major tributaries flow into the Hudson River, with the Mohawk River as the largest tributary. The Hudson River watershed is home to almost 5 million people. The Hudson River watershed encompasses five states. New York, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and New Jersey. 93% of the Hudson River watershed lies in New York State. 25% of the Hudson River basin is used for agriculture. 60% is forested. And 8% is urban. Almost 60% of the water in the watershed is used for commercial or industrial purposes. The Hudson River is one of the most important river systems in the eastern United States. The river begins at Lake Tier of the Clouds in the Adirondack Mountains, running 315 miles to end in New York Harbor. The watershed for the river totals 13,344 square miles, or 28%, of New York State. The river lies almost entirely inside New York State, except near New York City, where the river delineates the border between New York and New Jersey. The Hudson River Valley The Hudson Valley refers to the valley of the Hudson River and its adjacent communities in New York State generally from northern Westchester County northward to the cities of Albany and Troy. Historically a cradle of European settlement in the northeastern United States and a strategic battleground in colonial wars. It now consists of suburbs of the metropolitan area of New York City at its southern end, extending into the rural territory including exurbs, far and north. This shows the counties of the Hudson Valley. Geographically, the Hudson Valley could refer to all areas along the Hudson River, including Bergen County, New Jersey. However, this definition is not commonly used, and the Tappan Zee Bridge is often considered the southern limit of the area. At the time of the arrival of the first Europeans in the 17th century, the area of Hudson Valley was inhabited primarily by the Algonquian-speaking Mohican and Muncie Native American people, known collectively as River Indians. The Hudson Valley area was explored and settled primarily by the Dutch, who claimed the area they called New Nederland, or New Netherlands. These are the European colonies in North America in 1650. This included not just New Amsterdam, but the entire large territory of New Netherland that had been claimed by the Dutch. This is New Netherland from 1616 to 1664. Note the boundary between the Dutch and English settlements. Fort Orange, Dutch. Fort Orange was the first permanent Dutch settlement in New Netherland and was on the site of the present-day city of Albany. Fort Orange was a replacement for Fort Nassau, which had been built on nearby Castle Island in the Hudson River and which served as a trading post until 1617 or 1618, when it was abandoned due to frequent flooding. Both forts were named in honor of the Dutch House of Orange Nassau, the Port of New York. This is a view of the Port of New York from the Battery, looking south, circa 1892. Note the large number of sailing ships and steam-powered ships. As the original part of New York City, Manhattan Island offered an excellent port for seagoing vessels in the age of sailing ships. This was, first of all, because of the protected waters of New York Bay beyond the Narrows, where the Verrazano Narrows Bridge is today. Here is the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, looking back into New York Harbor. The Hudson was called the Nord River by the Dutch, 
the Delaware in the southern part of their colony being the South River. This is a map of the harbor of New York about 1730. Note the Hudson's River, also called the Nord or North River by the Dutch, and the present-day East River called the South River. Secondly, both the North and East Rivers are tidal in nature, flowing in one direction as the tide comes in and reversing direction as the tide goes out. This made it easier for sailing vessels to enter the port regardless of wind conditions. The Hudson is tidal to Troy, almost all the way up to Albany. It was called Mohican Tuck or river that flows two ways by the Lenape tribe, who formerly inhabited both banks of the lower portion of the river, all of present-day New Jersey and the island of Manhattan. The Hudson is tidal to Troy almost all the way up to Albany. It was called Mohican Tuckal River that flows two ways by the Lenape tribe, who formerly inhabited both banks of the lower portion of the river, all of present-day New Jersey and the island of Manhattan. All of this was carved out during the last ice age, that ended some 10,000 to 20,000 years ago. This is the area of North America covered by ice during the last ice age. Note that the glaciers extend down to the present location of New York City. The ice shaped the present-day rivers and bays around the city. Direct evidence of this is these two glacial erratics in Central Park. These large boulders were transported by moving ice around 20,000 years ago when the ice sheet covered this area to a depth of about 1,000 feet. This is the Hudson River with a view of Jersey City in the 1880s. The East River is a tidal strait in New York City connecting up a New York Bay on its south end to Long Island Sound on its north end. The East River separates Long Island, including the boroughs of Queens and Brooklyn, from the island of Manhattan and the Bronx in reference to its connection to Long Island Sound. It was once also known as the Sound River. New Amsterdam This is a brief timeline of events in the history of New York City in the 1600s and before 1524. Giovanni da Verrazzano, the first European to see New York Harbor, arrived and named it Nouvelle Angoulême 1614. The Dutch settled on Manhattan Island 1624. New Amsterdam was founded by the Dutch West India Company. And in May 1624, the first settlers arrived in New Netherlands 1625. The Dutch built Fort Amsterdam 1626. The Lenape tribes old Manhattan Island to the Dutch 1639. Jonah Sprunk, a Swedish settler, bought 500 acres of land from the Lenape tribe, creating a settlement called Bronx Land, and soon after, this settlement became known as the Bronx 1650. The population of New Amsterdam reached 1,000. 1654. Sephardi Jews arrived from the Iberian Peninsula and formed Congregation Shirath Israel, the oldest Jewish congregation in the U.S. 1664. New Amsterdam was ceded by Peter Stuyvesant to England, who renamed it New York after James, Duke of York. The town officially became part of England by the Treaty of Breda of 1667. This is the flag of the Dutch West India Company. The Dutch West India Company was a company formed by Dutch merchants that had a trade monopoly in the Dutch possessions in the Americas, which included Brazil and the Caribbean. This lower tip of Manhattan with Wall Street as its northern boundary was the area of the original Dutch settlement of New York City, then called New Amsterdam. Note that this southern tip of the island has been increased in area since those days by landfills. The Dutch first settled here in 1624. A fort called Fort Amsterdam was built at the southern tip of the Manhattan Island. From the very beginning, this was a cosmopolitan commercial town. New Amsterdam was a company town owned, operated and controlled by the Dutch West India Company.
These are the European colonies in North America in 1650. The Dutch West India Company was a company formed by Dutch merchants that had the trade monopoly in the Dutch possessions in the Americas, which included Brazil and the Caribbean. This included not just New Amsterdam, but the entire large territory of New Netherland that had been claimed by the Dutch. Here is New Netherland from 1616 to 1664. Note the boundary between the Dutch and English. And the Dutch placed names like Brooklyn, Flushing, Sint Sings, and Kinderhook. During the rest of the 1600s, the Hudson Valley formed the heart of the New Netherland colony operations, with the New Amsterdam settlement on Manhattan serving as a post for supplies and defense of the upriver operations. Here is New Amsterdam around 1650. The city tavern was built in 1642 and served as the Stad Toys or City Hall from 1653 to 1667. This is New Amsterdam in 1673. In the Treaty of Westminster, 1674, following a war between Britain and the Netherlands, the Dutch were forced to cede their possession of New Nederland to Britain. This Dutch colony was then taken over by the British in 1674 and renamed New York City by the Duke of York. Note that New York was initially written as a hyphenated word. Fort Amsterdam was renamed Fort James in honor of James II of England and later named Fort George. 1703 New York's first city hall. Federal Hall facing Wall Street was built 1754 King's College, later Columbia College, was established 1762 Queen's Head Tavern, later named Franz's Tavern, opened 1767 the John Street Theatre opened. It is known as the birthplace of American theatre, and was the first permanent theatre in the Financial District 1774, the population of New York City reached 23,000. The American Revolution, 1776 August 27 The Continental Army was routed by British Army troops in the Battle of Long Island, also known as the Battle of Brooklyn. September 15 British troops captured Lower Manhattan following the landing at Kipps Bay on the East River. American troops then stood off British troops in the Battle of Harlem Heights in northern Manhattan. September 21st approximately 1,000 houses, a quarter of the city, were destroyed in the Great Fire of 1776, a week after British troops captured the city during the American Revolution. September 22nd execution of Nathan Hale by the British as a spy. November 16th Battle of Fort Washington as Royal Navy warships sail north up the Hudson River and attack Forts Washington and Lee. The British now control the river and are in power in the area. 1780 The black population reached 10,000, and New York City became the center of free black life in North America. 1783 November 25th, Evacuation Day. British troops depart and New Yorkers celebrate Evacuation Day. The day General George Washington returned to the city with his Continental Army, and the last British forces left the newly recognized independent United States. 1789 March 1st, United States Congress begins meeting. April 30th, George Washington was inaugurated as U.S. President 1790 January 8th. U.S. President Washington delivered the first State of the Union Address. February 2, the United States Supreme Court convened for the first time. The population of New York City reached 33,131 and became the largest city in America, surpassing Philadelphia. This is a map of New York in 1766, ten years before the beginning of the American Revolution. Also, note the Collect Pond, 
which will serve as a major source of fresh water for the growing city, until the completion of the Old Croton Aqueduct in 1842. This is a map of New York in 1766, ten years before the beginning of the American Revolution. Note the many wharves or slips in Lowy Manhattan, especially on the East River side. Note also the Brooklyn or Brooklyn Ferry Terminal. This is a map of the city of New York in 1817 by David Longworth. Note again the large number of wharves or slips at the Lowy end of Manhattan. Also note that Broadway, or Broadway, now ends at 8th Street. When New York was an English colony, a royal governor and an elected council shared legislative powers. Opened in 1704, the New York City Hall was built here on what was already named Wall Street, New York City and the American Revolution. On July 9, 1776, angry New Yorkers violently tore down the statue of King George and, as the story goes, melted his body into bullets used in the battles of the Revolutionary War. This is the New York City area in 1776, at the beginning of the American Revolution. The Great Fire of New York occurred on September 19, 1776. The Hudson Valley in the Revolutionary War, 1776-1783. The Hudson Valley became one of the major regions of conflict during the American Revolution. Part of the early strategy of the British was to sever the colonies in two by maintaining control of the river. Once the New England colonies were separated from the other colonies, the war would be brought to a swift conclusion. The Hudson River was a strategic waterway during the American Revolution. It was the scene of numerous battles, including the battles at Ticonderoga, Orsgany, and the decisive American victory at Saratoga. The Hudson River was a strategic waterway during the American Revolution. It was the scene of numerous battles, including the battles at Ticonderoga, Orsgany, and the decisive American victory at Saratoga. George Washington made his headquarters at Newburgh, along the west bank of the Hudson River, in 1782 and later disbanded the American armies from there. In August 1776, the British forces under General William Howe on Staten Island undertook an amphibious operation across the Narrows. They landed in Brooklyn, where they routed Washington's army at the Battle of Long Island. The British plan was for Howe to send a fleet up the Hudson to meet Jen Burgoyne coming south from Canada through Lake Champlain and Lieutenant Colonel St. Ledger coming east along the Mohawk Valley. Howe was to send a fleet up the Hudson to meet Burgoyne coming south from Canada by way of Lake Champlain and St. Leger coming east along the Mohawk Valley. St. Leger was to march east along the Mohawk Valley to meet Burgoyne and Howe. Burgoyne was to march south from Canada through Lake Champlain to meet Howe and St. Leger at the Hudson River. The American militia engaged St. Leger at the bloody Battle of Oriskany. He then laid siege to Fort Stanwix. But with the approach of the reinforcements of the Continental Army, he gave up and retreated to Canada. The troops that were sent north were delayed by skirmishes along the way and were too late to help Burgoyne. Howe then changed his mind and sent most of his troops south to capture Philadelphia. Burgoyne's march was much delayed by skirmishes and the difficult terrain along the way. The battles we fought 19 days apart on the same ground. 9 miles 14.5 kilometers south of Saratoga. Burgoyne, whose campaign to divide New England from the southern colonies had started well but slowed due to logistical problems, but won a small tactical victory over General Horatio Gates and the Continental Army in the September 19th Battle of Freeman's Farm, at the cost of significant casualties. 
lacking help from St. Leger or Hal. He was forced to surrender at the Second Battle of Saratoga. British General John Burgoyne's gains we erased when he again attacked the Americans in the October 7 Battle of Bemis Heights. And the Americans captured a portion of the British defenses. Burgoyne was therefore compelled to retreat. And his army was surrounded by the much larger American force at Saratoga. Forcing him to surrender on October 17. News of Burgoyne's surrender was instrumental in formally bringing France into the war as an American ally. France had previously given supplies, ammunition and guns. The French formal participation changed the war into a global conflict. This is a painting of Evacuation Day and Washington's triumphal entry in New York City on November 25, 1783. New York City as the federal capital. After the Revolutionary War, architect and engineer Peter L'Enfant remodeled the City Hall to house the new American government. Renamed Federal Hall, this is where the first Congress convened. George Washington took his presidential oath of office on the second floor balcony in April 1789. The original building served as New York's first city hall and hosted the 1765 Stamp Act Congress before the American Revolution. After the United States became an independent nation, the building served as a meeting place for the Congress of the Confederation, the nation's first central government under the Articles of Confederation. From 1785 to 1789, with the establishment of the United States federal government in 1789, it was renamed Federal Hall, as it hosted the first Congress and was where George Washington was sworn in as the nation's first president. It was demolished in 1812. The current structure of Federal Hall was built as the U.S. Customs House for the Port of New York before serving as a sub-treasury building from 1862 to 1925. On the 150th anniversary of Washington's inauguration in 1939, this hallowed space where America began was designated Federal Hall Memorial National Historic Site, and its stewardship was transferred to the National Park Service. Federal Hall is at 26 Wall Street in the financial district of Manhattan. This Greek Revival-style building was completed in 1842 as the Customs House. Is owned by the United States federal government. And is operated by the National Park Service as a national memorial called the Federal Hall National Memorial. A few points of interest nearby are the New York Stock Exchange just across the street on Wall Street. And just a block away is Trinity Church. This Lowy Manhattan area also has the South Street Seaport Museum. The Museum of Jewish Heritage. Francis Tavern. And Castle Clinton National Monument. Several blocks to the north are the World Trade Center and the 9-11 Memorial and Museum. The first session of the United States Congress began on March 4, 1789. The second session ended on August 12, 1790. After that, Congress moved to Philadelphia and, ten years later, in 1800, moved to the new national capital of Washington, D.C. Thus, between 1789 and 1790, New York City was the national capital for less than two years in 1952. It became essentially a world capital with the building of the United Nations headquarters. Nevertheless, New York City has retained its predominance as the national, if not to some degree a world capital, of finance, fashion, publishing, and culture in general. Recommended videos, New York City. Recommended video, 
Here grows New York. Recommended video, History of New York City. Recommended video, The History of New York in 12 Minutes. Recommended video, What's Left of New Amsterdam and the Origins of the USA. Recommended video, George Washington's Defeat in New York. Recommended video, The Simple Genius of New York City's Water Supply System. Recommended video, A Closer Look at New York City's Water Supply. Recommended video, The Port of New York and New Jersey. Recommended video, The Erie Canal. Recommended video, New York City Draft Riots of 1863. Recommended video, Modern Marvels, Building the Brooklyn Bridge. Recommended video, America's First Mega Project. The Amazing Story of the Brooklyn Bridge. Recommended video, The City of Greater New York. The Story of Consolidation. Recommended video, How Did the Boroughs of New York Get Their Names? Recommended video, Top 10 Best Places to Visit in Manhattan New York Manhattan Travel Guide. Recommended video, Top 10 Things to Do in Manhattan. Recommended video, To 10 Things to Do in Brooklyn. Recommended video, 9 Best Things to Do in Queens. Recommended video, Top Rated Attractions and Things to Do in the Bronx. Recommended video, Top 7 Things to Do in Staten Island, New York City's Unexpected Gem. Recommended video, Top 10 Largest U.S. Cities by Population, 1790-2017. Recommended video, Biggest U.S. Cities, 1776-2035. Recommended video, Top 15 Most Populated Cities in the World, 1700-2019. Recommended video, YouTube Navigation. Recommended videos. Walking tours of New York City. FOA Street Level Experience of New York City. View the video walking tours. It's the next best thing to being fay. Recommended videos, New York City Walking Tour Playlist. Recommended video. New York City Walking Tour by New York Tour 1. Part 1, Midtown Manhattan. Recommended video, New York City Walking Tour by New York Tour 1. Part 2, Downtown Manhattan. Recommended video, New York City Virtual Walking Tour. Midtown Manhattan New York City Walk. Hudson Yards and Midtown West. Recommended video, Driving Downtown. New York City. Recommended video, New York City's Financial District Walking Tour. Recommended video, New York City 4K Walking Tour. Downtown Manhattan. One World Trade Center to South Street Seaport. Recommended video, New York City Walking Tour 4K. Fifth Avenue. Sunset Walk. Recommended video, New York City Walking Tour Part 1. Midtown Manhattan. Recommended video, New York City Walking Tour. Times Square. New York City, Table of Contents. Thanks for watching. This is continued in part 2.